is Anthony from Pinehead.tv. You can follow us on Twitter at Pinehead TV. Today I'm going to show you how to use some Ajax, some PHP, and a little bit of HTML to create a basic form that passes information without having to reload a page. This is useful for when you want to grab information on when a user selects a div or clicks on an image to pass back to your server or perform a specific action without having to reload the page. It increases the user experience. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you a real basic example. The code is available on GitHub or on Pinehead.tv where on this specific tutorial or you can go to GitHub.com slash Pinehead to download this and we can get started and you can uh, open up your imaginations from there. So let's go ahead and get started. As you can see I already have the HTML page created and what this looks like is uh oh is the just the basic name and email and click to submit so when we click this div what we want to happen is we want it to pass the information within these two text elements onto a PHP page and then the PHP page will use the mail function and send us an email to our Gmail account over here as you can tell it's empty so let's go ahead and do that first what we want to do is make sure you have your jQuery source CDN in there or just the source files and we'll do jQuery select document dot ready function if you don't know what this does what this does is it says everything within these brackets or within this document dot ready function perform after the document object model is actually fully loaded so it allows our page and our page elements to load before it runs this code this is kind of the equivalent of putting your JavaScript code at the bottom of your page okay so from there what we need to do is we need to select or detect when somebody clicks on this div submit with an ID of submit. So what we'll do is we'll do jQuery select. It's an ID so it's a hashtag submit dot click. We'll do our function. Within our function code we need something to happen. So let's test to make sure something happens when we click. All right, we'll come over here and refresh our page click me to submit and we get an alert box that says something happens now real quick guys what you want to do if you're on Chrome if you're on just right hand click and select inspect element if you're on Firefox go and download firebug you'll have the same capability from there what we'll want to do is click on the console and you'll be able to detect any type of errors that happens with your JavaScript code I'll also show you here what we're gonna do to be able to detect that it's actually passing the information to the PHP page but we'll do that in a second Next, what we need to do is we need to get the current value of the name ID, the na uh, name input, and the email input. So in order to do that, what we want to do is we want to say var name equals, and we're going to do jQuery select. We're going to select the name ID, that val, and that gets the current value of what's in that text element. We'll do the same thing for email, var email equals jQuery select id of email dot val for value next what we need to do is we need to put these two elements what we're gonna do is we're gonna pass these two variables name and email onto our PHP page with Ajax how do we do that well if you are familiar with PHP forms what we're gonna do is we're gonna use it using the post method so I need to put this in a format that PHP can read so what I'll do is I'll say var string um, let's name that something else var data equals We'll do our name equals, put that in, this is just plain text, so we put that in a uh, single quote. We're going to conc concatenate it and add our name, do another concatenate, and then the and sign, email equals email. Okay, so how do we know that this works right? Let's use the console.log function and put in data. So whenever, what we expect to happen is when you click submit, it's going to grab the two variables of the, uh, values of these two text elements it's going to put it in our data variable and then we're going to be able to see and make sure that it worked properly so let's watch let's refresh the page we'll say this is name val this is email value click submit now if you come down here and look in our inspect element area our console.log writes it to the console and you see our name there and our emails there so it's grabbing the right information so we know that that works Next, what we need to do is we need to use the jQuery Ajax function to pass this to our PHP page. Let's open and close our brackets, create us some space, and this is going to be a type of, uh, we're going to post it, 
it's going to be type post because that's what we're going to use to post this information that's important uh, when we're looking at the PHP because we'll use the PHP post type in order to grab these variables. Next, we're going to say the URL of this. This is actually going to be php.php. You can name it whatever you want. Um, this is your relative path. If you're one folder up, you'll just do that. Or if it's in your includes folder, you'll just add in includes. But this is where it is relative to your root directory on your web server. Next, what we want to do is we want to pass it some data. And what data do we want to pass it? We want to pass it our var data. Uh, let's rename this to var data so we can know that this is a variable. And so we're going to pass it var data. OK, next what we need to do is create a success function, because if it's successful, we want to let our user know. And we're just going to do a quick, quick alert. It was successful. Was a success. How's that? OK, so that should get us going on our Ajax. Next, what we need to do is we need to check our PHP page. Now, I've already written some PHP code, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show it to you and we're just going to rewrite it here. So this is kind of what it looks like. In fact, I guess I don't really have to rewrite it. So we can just take a look at what it is. We have our string name equals post. This is where the post, the type comes important over here. You see it's post. So we can tell our PHP to listen for a post HTTP and the variable name. It's going to listen for the variable name, which equals our variable there. And then it's going to listen for email which then equals our email value on the text page. From there, what it's going to do is it's going to use a simple mail function. It's going to say, send an email to my email, the subject of name saying, thank you. So from there, let's come back over to our PHP page. Guys, don't expect this to work the first time. Nothing ever does. Let's just, uh, just assume it's wrong and we can troubleshoot it from there. Um, so what we'll do is we'll enter our name. Our name will be Pinehead. Our email will be Anthony. Actually, let's change that to pineheadtv at gmail.com. We'll click on click to submit. We look down here at console.log. It looks like our name was sent at pinehead. Email is pineheadtv at gmail.com. We got our success function that comes back and says it was a success. We come over to our Gmail. We have a new email that says thank you with the subject of pinehead. So, guys, there's Different things you can do here as well. You can add in some form validation for your emails. You can say, now that you have your variables, you can say something like, let's make this a little bit more clean. Let's add in a quick form validation. If name is not, not equal to null, then perform the Ajax function. You can do that. You can add in uh, name and email, which basically says if these two valuables are not null, you can specifically uh, prevent this Ajax from happening. You can also use that code and say if it's not null, then let's populate a div tag with a notification that says, well, this is not null. You need to pop it up. So you can add form validation. You can do tricks like uh, you can search for a specific ID and grab an attribute. So if you add an attribute to the submit tag, such as hi equals hello there, you can do the jQuery select and grab an attribute. And you do that just by doing, to grab that attribute, we would do something like jQuery select submit dot attr, and then you grab that. And so you would grab the hi attribute. So guys, I just wanted to add those few things in there. We're not gonna jump into those details in there because that's not really the point of the tutorial. But I hope this gets you started. If you need anything specific or have any other requests, feel free to let me know. This code is available if you do make any changes. Also, feel free to comment that back. Um, and I appreciate it, guys, and look forward to seeing you next time.